RC with Adam is brought to you in part by these super awesome people. Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam, and I just want to give a, a quick intro to this build series for this 3-inch Cinewhoop that you see right here. Now, I don't want to discourage you from, from building a Cinewhoop, but I do want to let you know before you you know build along with me if you want to do that. I want to let you know that the reason why this uh, build series has been a long time coming I actually built this about a month or so ago, um, is because I'm not actually super sold on the Cinewhoop uh, style of quadcopter. And that's because with with this quadcopter, and, and maybe this is just me, or maybe it's just the components here or something, but I'm just not getting super amazing, uh, you know, cinematic performance out of it. And I'm getting kind of like wobbles in the video, like a lot more wobbles than I would have just with flying my five inch quadcopter. Uh, and so it kind of made me realize like, well, you know, unless I'm flying like around people, you don't need a Cinewhoop to get that cinematic, smooth look that kind of thing. So uh, I just want to mention that in case you're in case you're thinking like, oh, I got to build a Cinewhoop because otherwise I can't get that, you know, cinematic footage. Um, the main good thing about a Cinewhoop is that you have uh, protected propellers. Now these are ducts, uh, ducted propellers, but uh, my understanding is that unless the propellers are, the propeller tips are actually so close to the duct, like a, an incredibly small, like, like, half a millimeter or something uh, close to the duct, um, then you're really not getting as much performance uh, out of the duct as you could. And the ducts really change the performance of the quadcopter or negatively impact the performance of the quadcopter quite a bit. So that sounds like a really negative thing to say actually before a build series, but I just want you to be aware that um, this this is my first Cinewhoop. It's kind of an experiment, um, but uh, if you hope, you know, maybe you'll enjoy building along with me or just watching me build it and maybe it will be helpful to you. So in that case, let's continue with this build series. Here's part one of several parts building this three inch Cinewhoop. Enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam and I am very excited to start this latest quadcopter build. This is going to be a three inch propeller sized Cinewhoop build and this is going to be great as of right now i have not actually you know put these parts together and tested them out so this is going to be kind of an experiment so i'm not really saying that all of these parts are the best choice for this build but i am going to build them and put them together and uh, see how they fly so before we get started let's take a look at the components we're going to be working with let's start off with first we have the uh, jhe mcu F4 all-in-one board, so we have the flight controller and the ESCs and, and the power distribution board all uh, integrated into one board right here, which is very tiny. And for this reason, this is why this is kind of not exactly a beginner build if you do choose to use this board. I'm just kind of using this because uh, I want to kind of experiment with it because it's kind of the hot board right now. And so I want to see how it does on this Cinewhoop, uh, but Another good alternative would be like the Mamba F405 uh, Mark II, either the Mini or the full size. Um, that that would probably be easier to work with because this one is uh, pretty tiny and the solder pads are pretty darn tiny as well. Also, the this doesn't come with mounts or mounting hardware, and this is a uh, this is a 25.5 uh, sized mounting hole. Uh, board. So it's larger than a 20 by 20 and it's smaller than a 30 by 30. It's kind of a weird in-between size. So I created this adapter. This is a 3D printed adapter that I designed and I'll have the uh, design for this available on uh, Thingiverse and GrabCAD uh, once I finalize it. So probably by the time you're watching this video. So check the description down below. And also I'll have the, uh, the, the list for all of these parts in the description down below as well. For the motors, we're going to be using the Emacs Eco motors. These are 1407 2800 KV motors. I know 2800 KV is, uh, kind of on the lower side for, for what I've seen, uh, for Cinewhoops. Uh, typically like, I think this also comes in a 36 and a 41 100 kV uh, motor, I believe. And either probably, I mean, honestly, any of them are probably going to be just fine. 
Um, but we'll see how this one does. My theory is that maybe we can get some better flight time um, even though we might give up uh, total thrust output. As what I've seen from the limited testing data there is out there, this thing won't be pulling uh, anywhere close to 20 amps at full load. For the camera, we have the Runcam Phoenix 2. This one replaces the Runcam Eagle, and it's, that's pretty cool because I had always wanted to get the Eagle because of the image quality and like wide dynamic range, and it's a CMOS cam uh, sensor camera, and I think I like those more than the CCD. In any case, this is the Joshua Bardwell version, so it does allow us to um, change the camera settings with our stick commands. So we'll, we'll basically add another wire uh, or two wires. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the wiring diagram yet, but we'll be able to connect this to the flight controller. Should be able to, I think, if that works, that would be great. For the receiver, I'm running FlySky. So this is the FLI 14 Plus receiver. This is uh, version 1.0. And this one is from iRangeX or also sometimes sold under Happy Model. And I think that, like, what I've found in the different receivers I've used is that this is the best all around. Uh, receiver for quadcopters for FlySky uh, because this has it does have um, dual antennas and although they are short that's probably the, my biggest issue with this is the antennas are short and you can't swap them out they're direct soldered uh, but um, it has good range from what I can tell and it has built-in RSSI on channel aux channel 10 I believe so very good uh, option there also it does have this plug uh, which is kind of, you know, it could be bad or it could be good depending on how you look at it. I kind of like it because it's easy to swap out different receivers. In any case, that's what we're using for the receiver. For the video side of things, we have the AKK Race uh, video transmitter. And I got this because um, this is kind of a budget quad sort of, uh, but I, I saw this one, it was only $10 and it just, it looked good because it, it was just uh, very simple, switchable between 25 and 200 milliwatts. Um, it has an MMCX connector and it also allows for smart audio as well. So we can change our VTX settings and band and all that sort of stuff through the stick commands via the flight controller. And to connect to that, we have the iFlight Sigma. This is a right-hand circularly polarized antenna, so uh, video transmitter antenna. So be sure that you match up the right-hand or left-hand circular polarization to your uh, video for to the antenna that's on your video uh, goggles. And this one also has the MMCX connector as well to connect into. It just snaps right in to our VTX right there. I got iFlight because really I was going to get the Axie 2, um, but they were out of stock at race day quads. And it's very, very small. Like this one, I mean, this is ridiculous. Like compared to the size of my finger. Here's a Pagoda on the budget basher that we built last time. Look at the size difference of that antenna. That is just, that is nuts. And of course, we need a frame upon which to put all of these wonderful goodies. And this is the Reptile Cloud 149 HD frame. The HD is a really important part because the HD version is like the second version and there's no V2. It's not listed as V2, it's listed as HD for some reason. And so this one has uh, stronger arms and they are replaceable arms as well. And for more, you can get all the details and specs on this in my review video of this frame um, and so but for the, what's most important is for the mounting we have 30 by 30 holes and 20 by 20 holes and for the camera it is made for a 19 millimeter camera which is what this is and it will fit it like just right like it's a very uh, tight fit I mean it's it's yes it's made just for that and of course on here we will have the uh, four ducts that we'll be putting on once we get towards the end of our building and it should be fantastic. A couple other things is like a GoPro mount. Um, I, th this, the kit does not come with one. And if I want, if I need a TPU one, I will just 3D print it myself, but you can purchase uh, GoPro mounts that go on the top of here. And for the propellers, I got all kinds of propellers. I got like five or six different kinds of propellers uh, to test out. So we'll kind of figure out which one I like the most. 
But most importantly, I did get a lot of these are, are specifically designed for Cinewhoops, so they have more of a bull nose or flat tip, and that is sort of, in theory, supposed to help with the, uh, the actual, uh, well, not really getting a good seal in the duct, but help to uh, use the duct to our advantage, let's say. And let's see, these here, so these, the Nazgul, the iFlight Nazgul. And then I got some other ones, but they, they're not really for the ducts, like the T-Motor. Uh, so anyway, we'll be taking a look at these. I'll be testing those out, so stick around for other videos talking about propellers specifically. And, of course, we will need a battery. I bought this one from Race Day, Cro Qua Cro Ray Race Day Quads as well. This is a 1300 milliamp hour four cell battery. And we're going to try this out because that's what I've heard is a good size for Cinewhoops. So we will see how that goes and it will probably just sit on top right there. And to hold the battery in place, we're going to need a battery strap. I'm going to be using this one from Race Day Quads because they sent it to me for free in my order because they're cool. So that does it for the parts. As far as other tools and stuff, mostly we're going to need a multi-bit driver. I have a bunch of different bits right here. We're gonna need like uh, two millimeter and 1.2 millimeter the most. And uh, that's hex bits and also a soldering iron. And I'm just using this uh, really cheap one and maybe some pliers or you know some tweezers to hold wires and such. And of course you'll need some solder as well for the soldering iron. And um, a multimeter would be great. If you have a multimeter, that will be very useful. Uh, mine, I, it's here somewhere. And for cutting wires and things like that, you might want some, uh, some wire strippers and cutters. Um, that's just kind of nice to have, or you could probably make do with an X-Acto knife to sort of trim things. And of course, some zip ties will come in handy, probably the, the kind of the smaller kind. These ones are pretty thin. These are four inch cable ties. And then possibly some heat shrink tubing uh, will come in handy. All right, I think that does it. If I left anything out or forgot anything, I will put it in in the editing phase. Let's get started.